Welcome back to the JavaScript Essential Training Series. I am Mike King, your host, and in this tutorial we'll be talking about the Document Object Model, or the DOM as it's referred to inside of HTML. And the DOM is a very important aspect of HTML and of JavaScript and how it actually operates within HTML and how it manipulates the actual HTML documents. So the Document Object Model. We've learned about some of the high-level aspects of JavaScript programming language. We've actually talked about some of the things we've been introduced to was the introduction to JavaScript itself. We've talked about comments in JavaScript. We've looked at proper statement structure in JavaScript. We've actually learned about variables and the different types of variables that are available. Now we're going to start to dig into the power of JavaScript programming language and what it can actually do for us as we're designing our web pages. With the DOM in HTML, JavaScript can access and change all the elements in the HTML document. When your browser loads a web page, the browser creates what's called the document object model of the page as it's loaded. The model is constructed as a tree of objects that are included on the page. Throughout this course, we'll learn about many of the built-in functions that allow JavaScript to access the different objects of that tree. So actually, let's take a look at a very basic document object model. This is what a document object model looks like. You'll notice we're loading a document and we have the root element, which is the HTML element in HTML. And from there, it branches out to do two different areas. We have the head section of the HTML and the body element of the HTML. And those two elements are made up of element tags and different text items that actually make up the web page itself. Inside the body, we have attributes, we have elements. Inside the head, we actually have elements and text. With JavaScript, we can actually manipulate these elements and attributes and even the styles and CSS as you're going to see in the lab. So with the document object model, JavaScript gives all the power it needs to create and manipulate the HTML document. JavaScript can change all the HTML elements in a page. They can physically go in and change an element. JavaScript can change all the HTML attributes in the page. JavaScript can change all the CSS styles in a page. JavaScript can remove existing HTML elements and attributes. So we can actually go in and remove things from our page dynamically with JavaScript. JavaScript can add new HTML elements and attributes to our page. JavaScript can react to all existing HTML events in the page, which is very interesting. And you'll see why that makes our pages much more interactive when we start using JavaScript. And JavaScript can create new HTML events in, the, in a particular web page. So using the JavaScript programming language, we can actually do a lot of things to the HTML page, to the document object model, that we would have never been able to do any other way. I mean, this, this language allows us to go in and, and manipulate the page in ways that we could never do before. So let's look at a couple of examples inside of our lab as to how we can actually work with some of these object models inside the HTML document. And throughout this training course, you're going to see us do much more with the document object model. I just wanted to introduce it to you early in the training so you can understand why we're doing the things we're doing as we progress through this training. So let's move into our development environment and demonstrate what we just talked about. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize my presentation and drop into my development environment. First thing I want to do, let's go ahead and confirm that we've got our Apache web server up and running, which we do. I am going to use Sublime Text 3 for this demonstration. And you'll notice I've got my template.html file loaded. This is from section one of our introduction to JavaScript training. And I'm gonna use Google Chrome as my web browser of choice for the, again, for this demonstration. First thing I wanna do, let's go ahead and save this file. I'm gonna do a save as on my template file because I don't wanna overwrite it. And I'm just gonna call this dom.html so that we can demonstrate some of the things we talked about in the training. I wanna go back and refresh and then load the actual dom HTML file. Let's go ahead and change our title to DOM HTML. Or actually, I just put in DOM template. And I'm going to come down inside my container and put in an H3. And I'm just going to call this DOM training. And close out that H3. Let's go ahead and save those changes. Refresh the browser window to make sure we're in the right file. And we are. Perfect. All right, so what I want to do. The first thing I would do, the, the HTML DOM can be accessed with JavaScript, and actually there's a couple other programming languages that can do this also. But in the DOM, all HTML, all HTML elements are defined as objects. 
And it's important for us to remember that. And that's why we call it the document object model. It actually takes all the elements in HTML and turns them into objects when it creates this model. The program interface is in the properties and the methods of each object. And that's what we're actually going to be assessing. Our property is a value that you can get or set, like changing the content of an element. And a method is an action you can do, like add or delete something from the element. So we're going to be looking at property and methods as we go through this training. So the first thing I want to do is let's come down past our H3, and I'm going to create a P tag. And I'm going to actually type this because I actually want you to see how this is done. And I want you to get used to doing this, so I'm hoping you're following along. I'm going to give that P tag an ID of text1. Then I'm going to close out the P tag. And then I'm actually going to close the P tag with no content, so I'm just giving it an ID. Now what I want to do, let's go ahead and save the change. I'm going to go into the head section of my document. Now normally, we could actually put this JavaScript usually at the end of the document once the document's loaded, because that's not normally where I tend to put my JavaScript. But again, demonstration small, so I'm just going to come down and right below the P tag, I'm going to open up the script tag. And again, I want that P tag there before I actually load this JavaScript because I'm actually going to manipulate the JavaScript with, I'm sorry, I'm going to ma manipulate that paragraph tag with my JavaScript. So I'm going to say document. And I want to put down dot. And again, because we're getting into now the function or the method is like they call it get element by ID. So it's get element by ID. And then what I need to do is in parentheses, I want to give it the ID that I'm going to look for. So the ID I'm looking for, obviously, is text1. And then I'm going to come outside my parentheses and I'm going to say dot inner HTML. So what I'm doing now is I'm targeting the inner HTML of the text1 ID. And I'm going to say that's going to equal and then inside quotation marks, I'm just going to type some text. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually have JavaScript put this text into that paragraph tag. So inside my text, I just put down, hello, I hope you're enjoying the class. I'm going to say this class, not then class. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. Make certain that we put that semicolon at the end of that JavaScript statement. Let me go ahead and spread this out so we don't have any line breaks. Great time for you to pause if you want to go ahead and type it in. Okay, so keep in mind now, what I'm doing is I'm looking at my document, which is the current document that I'm in, and I'm telling the document, I'm telling JavaScript, get the element by ID. So I'm actually getting this paragraph element by the ID of text one. And then I'm telling JavaScript, the inner HTML, so I'm, I'm targeting now the inner HTML of that element with the ID of text one. I want that to say, hello, I hope you're enjoying this class. So when I save all the changes and I refresh my browser window, that paragraph now becomes, hello, I hope you're enjoying this class. So JavaScript took that text and put it into the inner HTML of the paragraph tag with the ID of text one. JavaScript can manipulate not only inner HTML, but you're going to see we can manip manipulate some other things in JavaScript also. So let's move on to our next demonstration. We can also change styles using JavaScript. So to change the style of an HTML element, the syntax would I would use again, get element by ID, but now I'm going to actually target the style property. So let's add a different paragraph to our text. So I'm going to come down and put in another paragraph. And by the way, I don't have to use IDs, I can use classes, but for my examples, I'm going to be using IDs. You'll see throughout the training that we use IDs and classes when we're doing this. I'm just going to call this paragraph. So my ID is going to be PARA for paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and close the opening tag of the paragraph, and I'm going to just say, welcome to our training. And I'm going to end that with a pair or with an exclamation point, and then I'm going to close my paragraph tag. So I've got a paragraph now with an ID of PARA, welcome to our training. Now what I want to do is I want to put a different JavaScript statement inside. I'm going to actually copy this one so you don't have to watch me type it. I'm going to come down right below my previous statement. And I'm going to type this in. I'm going to say document.getElementById PARA. So now I'm targeting the paragraph. And I'm telling it now instead of inner HTML, I'm going to say dot style dot color. 
So I'm going for CSS. I'm going to change, physically change the color of that particular document. First off, let me comment this. So I'm going to put comment tags in front of this. You learned about comments in a previous tutorial so that we don't actually execute this code. I'm going to save the change just so you can see what it looks like in the browser window. And you'll see welcome to our training is now just standard text, standard paragraph text. But with JavaScript, I can actually change the styling of that text. So take the comments out, save the change, refresh my browser window, and now that paragraph text is red. And again, I've targeted the element by an ID, but I've changed the style and the color to red. And all I have to do to change that is just change the color. Now I can make it blue, save the change. And again, with JavaScript, script, I can dynamically change that text inside my document, document object model. So again, very, very powerful. I can change the font size. I can change the font style. I can have multiple things that I change. And you're going to see that throughout the training. We're going to do a lot of different things with our JavaScript as it relates to the DOM inside of our object models. All right. One more example I want to look at before we actually move on into our next tutorial. I want to look at events because this is where JavaScript really makes our web pages interactive by using the events inside of HTML. So the HTML DOM allows you to execute code when an event occurs. And there are hundreds of events that are occurring as our pages are loading, as things are happening on our page. We have all kinds of events that are occurring inside of HTML. Events are generated by the browser when things happen to the HTML elements. An element is clicked on, the page is loaded, input fields are changed. All of these are events inside of HTML. You'll learn more about events as we work through the tutorial changes or the tutorials inside of our training. But again, because we're talking about the doc document object model, I just wanted to give you some examples of things that we'll be doing as we move through the training in JavaScript. And one of the things we're going to be doing is on click events. So this example is going to change the HTML element. We're going to give it an ID. And when a user clicks a button, things are going to change in that element. So the first thing I would do is let's go back into our document. And I want to put in an H1 heading. So I'm going to put an H1 tag and I'm going to give this an ID and it's going to be equal to event one. And again, ID names can be anything we want them to be. I just happen to grab event one for this particular example. And I'm going to call it my new heading. And again, just for the sake of the demonstration, and I'm going to close out my H1 tag. So now I've got a new H1 in my document. Let's go ahead and save the change. Refresh our browser window and we'll see that H1 heading come up. My new heading. Perfect. Working just like it's supposed to. Now what I want to do is I want to put a button inside my document. So I'm going to come down below my last paragraph and I'm going to leave a couple lines just for clarity's sake so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to use a button element if we learn how to type it correctly. And I'm going to give that button element a type of button. So now I've got a type of button in my button element and I'm going to say on click. And on click is an event that occurs with buttons inside of HTML. And I'm going to put in there document.getElementById, just what we've been doing before. So document.getElementById. So I've got my getElementById and inside my parentheses and inside my quotation marks. Because now I've got my parentheses, I've got my quotation marks, and my ID for that element is event1. That's the ID that we just put in there. That's the ID we just put in there, I'm sorry, for our um, H1 tag. Actually, I want to make these single quotes because I've got this entire thing in double quotes, so I don't want to use double quotes inside my parentheses. And what I want to do now is let's just go ahead and change the style and the color. So I'm going to dot, dot style, dot color. We're going to do basically what we've done in the previous exercise. I'm going to say that's going to equal, um, we'll just make it red. Then I'm going to close out that button tag. I'm going to put click me. That's going to be my text. And then I'm actually going to close out the button tag. So I closed out my opening tag, put click me, closed out the actual button tag itself. So I'm going to save those changes. Let's go ahead and stretch this out. So if you're typing along, you don't have any line breaks. So again, we've got button with the type of button. And then I've given it an on click event and inside quotation marks, I've said document.getElementById. The ID I'm looking for is event one, and that's the ID we gave our H1 element in the top of the document. 
dot style dot color so when I'm clicking on this button or when I click the click me which is signifying a button in my HTML document it should change the color of my new heading from black which is what it is now to red let's go ahead and save all these changes great time to pause if you want to type all this in I'm going to refresh my browser window and now you'll see we've got this nice new heading I've got this nice new button when I click the button it changes my heading red so it's actually triggering off an event and the event we're triggering off is, is this on click event and because we're using JavaScript, I'm saying with the unclick event, go ahead and run this get element by ID event one, change this, the color of that button. So again, refresh my browser window. If I click the button, it changes that text to red. So that's three examples of how we actually use JavaScript to manipulate the DOM inside of HTML. Very high level examples. I just wanted you to see what the DOM was before we start getting deep into JavaScript. JavaScript is used a lot to manipulate the DOM, and that's why I wanted to introduce it to you early in the tutorials. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got an idea now of what we're going to be doing as we move through these tutorials. And now we're going to start diving deep into JavaScript and how JavaScript can make our websites much more interactive.